You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another special guest. Today, we're going to talk to Brian Gillette. He is executive coach author, speaker, and ultra-distance endurance athlete. And I can't wait to dive into that story because that's an amazing story. I was reading on his bio. But first and foremost, I want to welcome you, Brian, to the show because we're going to talk about leading and persevering through challenging times. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing well, Shamaya. It's great to be on your show and uh, good to be talking to you. It's likewise, great to talk to you, sir. And like I said moments ago, you're executive coach, author, speaker, and ultra distance endurance athlete, but you're also a former human resources executive and founder and principal consultant of Summiting Group. So let's learn a little bit about you, Brian. Man, how have you come along this journey of life? <laughs> Uh, well, you, you did a uh, you did a nice job on the bio. So, yeah, former executive um, VP of HR. Um, I've worked in the uh, technology area for many years, and then about ten years ago, started at my own consulting practice. Um, prior to that, in HR, I've been involved in a lot around leadership development. Started up and then run several leadership development or employee development functions, either in in finance or in, in the finance industry or in the technology industry. Um, you know, and one of the things is adventure is kind of a core of who I am. I love different adventures and love ultra distance events. And, and most of my life, I've been a, a cyclist. And then a couple of years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I got involved in running um, and started to do some ultra distance running. Kind of a, you know, start off with a marathon and go to a 50 miler, then a 100 miler, and then eventually a, a 200 mile around uh, Lake Tahoe, which was, which was just this amazing adventure. Um, I live here in the San Francisco Bay Area, got two kids and a wonderful wife. So that's uh, that's just a little bit about me, and I'm sure we'll dig deeper into other things. Yeah, and before we talk about your cyclist, because, I mean, I think that's very impressive to have a 205-mile run around Lake Tahoe and 76 and a half hours, and you only had 90 minutes of sleep. It was, yeah, so so you have a hundred, it's an organized run. There's about, I think about 70 or 75 people that started it and you have a hundred hours to do it. And it's all, if, if you know any of your listeners are familiar with Lake Tahoe, it's, it's one of the, it's just this iconic lake in, that spans California and Nevada. And it's all up at elevation. So the lowest point of the run is about 5,500 feet. And then you get up to about 10,000 feet. And you do have some, some rest areas along the way. You've got some aid stations where you can get, you can get some more water or some drink. You can get some food. You can just sit down and get a new pair of shoes um, or change out, I should say, into a new pair of shoes. And so about every 15 to 20 miles, there's a, a stoppage point. Um, I had uh, planned to sleep somewhere in the 100-mile area, which was about 30, about 35, 36 hours into the race for me. And I got in there, and earlier in the day, I'd taken some caffeine pills just to keep me awake. And so I had this caffeine in my body, and I, I couldn't fall asleep. So I decided, well, let's move on. And, and then um, I kept going, and, and finally... You know, about mile, I think 175 and, you know, it was 60 hours or so into it. I just, I was, I was exhausted and uh, crashed for about 90, 90 minutes. And, and it was the best 90 minutes of sleep I think I've ever had in my life. And then got up, felt, felt like a brand new man, although I didn't look like a brand new man, according to my wife and some of the friends that were, uh, were around helping me and then finished the last marathon to the uh, 205 mile. Um, of course. Now, that's very impressive. I have to say that first and foremost, because I don't know. I mean, do you happen to help coach people to prepare for a race like that? Because I can only imagine it takes a little bit of training more than the average. You know, it, it's it does take you know more than just your your typical training if you're training for a half marathon or a marathon, but the the process is the same. 
and and I've got a book that that uh, you know by the time this airs, it, the book's going to be out called Epic Performances. And what I did is I interviewed a hundred people. About seventy five, about three quarters of them were executives, so those at the C level, founders of companies, so people that had kind of reached the peak of their career. And then another quarter of the people were ultra distance athletes. And I wanted to understand, you know, are there similarities? And, and what I did find is there's tremendous amount of similarities. That ability to, to train for something, that ability to persevere, you know, whether you're starting your own company and you're dealing with challenges or you're trying to run an ultra distance event, you know, your ability to, to move forward, your ability to persevere through the difficult times, your ability to to prepare for the challenges are, are very similar. So what I generally do on the coaching is I'm generally working with the corporate folks um, on kind of how do you, you know, whether it's, it's with a, an individual on their leadership skills or with a team on how do you put together a plan to achieve something big, kind of your, your strategy. Um, that's generally where I'm doing, doing most of my coaching. And that's perfect because I was, I was going to use the cyclist as a metaphor for, for what you do with your, with your company. And with your company, let's just segue into that. You, you founded your, your own company, Summiting Group. And like you just said moments ago, you coach executives and vice leaders on performing at higher levels for themselves and their teams. When you're dealing with those individuals, what was the recipe, if you will? I mean, I know every every case is different, but what's, what's your general recipe, your core recipe for success? So uh, I break... The, I mean, the book titled Epic Performance, what Epic stands for is how do you envision, the E is how do you envision the big things in life at work, you know, at home that you want to accomplish. So you got to be able to look out far. You got to, you know, most people look out a year, two years. I'm, I'm talking, how do you look out 10, 15, 20 years out, maybe even further? So how do you envision those big things and, and not the things, I mean, you think, oh man, I mean, I'm sure there's people that think, oh, I couldn't run a marathon today um, or I couldn't start my own business today. Well, so, but could you in five years or 10 years? So how do you start that process? So how do you envision the things? And then the P for Epic is how do you put a plan in place in order to achieve that? You know, you, you, you got to have some sort of direction. You know, envision sets the big direction and then the plan helps you get there. And then how do you iterate to that plan? You know, if, if you want to start running a marathon, you don't start with a marathon. You start with, you know, two mile run and then you start with a three mile run and that's iterate. You work your way up to things. Um, you know, it, it, I, I didn't start off being the VP of HR. I started off at a, a much lower level and then kind of worked my way up. I iterated to the bigger goal. The C in Epic is how do you collaborate with others? You know, how do you have mentors? How do you learn from those people that have, have gone ahead of you either successfully or who have failed? You know, have, do you, how can you learn from that? And then you got to get out and perform it. You know, the, the envision, plan, iterate, collaborate, and then perform. Perform is you, you, you got to go out and you do it. You got to deal with the tough challenges. You got to persevere. And then once you cross that finish line, whatever finish line it is you're aiming for, how do you think about kind of what's next? So that's the, that's the formula, Shamaya, that I, I look at. And it just kind of goes through the envision, I think has to happen first. The perform generally happens at the end, and then plan, iterate, and collaborate are, are constantly happening. I really like that. So E for envision, P for plan, I for iterate, C for collaborate, and then after all of those, you can perform. When you are helping people understand this, because this is something that is not like, oh, I'm going to do it today, and then tomorrow I'll be successful. This is one of those things where you have to practice this daily. Because it's a long-term thing; it's not a short-term success. Yeah, um, you have to do. I don't know that you have to practice everything daily. Um, I think the big thing is we are in such a 
kind of a get rich quick, lose weight fast mentality. And you know, you, you think about okay, how am I going to be VP? You know, after working for this company for a year, when you're you, you're coming out of college, and or you know, how am I going to be? Uh, you know, if I want to start my company, how am I, how's it going to be a billion dollar a unicorn? You know, by the you know in the next year. And so we have such that mentality that things have to happen so quick. And and while that does happen in rare cases. I mean, the people that I talked to that founded their company, it didn't happen overnight. You know, it took a lot of hard work. It took a long time. It took some big successes and it, there were some failures along the way. So it's not something, you know, that, that's, that's really easy. And a, and a lot of what I talk about in the book is, you know, there's hard work. You know, you, the, the, the hundred people I talked to, you know, will tell you it took a lot of hard work to get to where I'm at. And, and none of them were overnight successes. So that, that's the big thing. Um, I think in terms of, uh, I don't look at it as what do you have to do every day? But when you get those ideas, what's one thing you can do to move you forward to that big idea? So if you want to start your own company and, I was working with somebody a couple of months ago, actually a couple of years ago, um, and then we were having some conversations a couple of months ago, and she wanted to start her own company. And, and so I said, well, you know, this, this was a couple of years ago, and, and she wasn't ready to do it, do it that year. I said, well, what's one thing you can do to move forward with that idea in the next 72 hours? And, and that's kind of, that, that's what I think you have to look at is, you know, what are those things you can just slowly move forward? You know, I remember when I started my own company about 10 years ago, I had had the idea probably 20 years prior, but I didn't, I, I knew I wasn't ready to start it. But the one thing I did is I, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get by the domain name. Um, and then I'm going to start researching. I'm going to interview other people. And so it's just kind of do, do a couple of things that move you forward. I, I love that, you know, that whole Christmas, uh, song about put one step in front of you, the other, and soon you'll be walking out the door. Just start with one thing and then do another thing and then do another thing. So it doesn't, you don't have to do something every day, but do something on a regular basis to move you forward with your big dreams. Once again, listen to I'm Your Focus Radio, talking to our special guest today, Brian Gillette, executive coach, author, speaker, and ultra-distance endurance athlete. Man, that's a tongue tie if you say that 10 times really fast. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but speaking of tongue tying, I mean, that's kind of funny. Uh, you know how we can trip over our own feet sometimes. Uh, sometimes when we're impatient with life, we want to rush things to happen. Like, man, I have to hit this goal or I have to hit this goal in a certain amount of time. To you, with your own experience, is it okay to not hit your goals in the time that you try to plan it out? And if if it is okay, then how do you stay motivated so that way you can eventually keep going to the next level? Yeah, and every once in a while you're going to miss a goal, and 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 that's okay. I mean, if I think if you regularly set goals and regularly miss those goals, you have to kind of look at what's going on. You know, why am I regularly missing a deadline or a goal? Um, every once in a while, things change as well. You know, I I had a, at one point in my life had a a goal from a career perspective is I wanted to work overseas, I wanted to kind of live and work overseas for a couple of years, because I mean I love to travel. I've traveled all over the world. Fortunately, I've been able to do that with my wife, with my kids, and I thought you know it would be fun. But for this, I said this before I had kids is you know fun to live overseas and work somewhere and get that experience and you know understand what it's like. Um, and and I. I changed that. Instead of doing that, I decided, okay, I'm going to go travel around the world. And spent, you know, one point I spent seven months traveling around the world with my wife. And then you know, about five years ago, we took our kids, our two kids out of school for a year and we traveled around the world for a year. So I shifted the goal a little bit. Um, it still got me kind of like the core what I wanted. But I think to your, to your big question is you, you should, you should, when you finish a goal or if you don't finish a goal, go back and really assess it 
Uh, and that's, that's one of the things I look at under kind of that, that last, um, component of perform is you finish something, kind of how well did you do? And, or if you didn't finish something, you know, there's places to assess that and, and look at, you know, why? And I think you always have to be evaluating that. That'll help you move forward even, even more so. And that's a great point because when we are able to reflect, then we can truly see, it's almost like a, a progress report <laughs> uh, card, if you will. Yeah. You, you get to be real with yourself and say, okay, this is what really happened. Not just what I thought about my head, because I like what you was talking about earlier, how we can uh, have that situation where we're missing goals consistently. And it's like, well, maybe we need to really slow down and be real. What's the reality? You know, not this unicorn type goal or dream, but what's the reality of what I need to measure myself with, if that makes sense? Yeah, no, it it, it does. I mean, when I was training for the uh, Tahoe 200 run, you know, I, I spent, uh, you know, almost a year really focused on that run. And, and I had to look at, I had training goals along the way. It's like, I need to, you know, bike this many hours. I need to run this many hours. I need to kind of do this amount. And for the most part, I was able to do that. But there were every once in a while, there's a week where it's like, okay, I missed something. And it's like, okay, why did I miss that? What do I need to do to prevent that from happening again? So how do you have those smaller goals? You know, I, I remember when I was uh, writing my book and working on the manuscript, you know, there were a couple times where I was just getting stuck. And, and I finally, I, it's like, all right, I need to really get focused. And, you know, let me, let me set a specific date of when I need to have kind of the, the 55,000 words written. And, and so I set that date. I then I kind of backed in. It's like, I need to write a thousand words every week. All right. So that's 200 words a day. So, all right. I'm going to get up at six in the morning. And I'm going to write for 90 minutes and get 200 words. And they didn't have to be the best 200 words. They just have to be 200 words. And, and so I, I became very focused. I became very diligent. Um, and, and that helps you move forward. And I, and I'd literally at the end of the week, I, I knew how many words I had written the previous week. I'd put those into Excel spreadsheet and it would tell me, all right, you wrote your thousand, you, know, you wrote 1200 words this week. You know, some weeks I'd write 950. It's like, okay, I can do better. So it's like, how, how do you, how do you always, how do you look at the data, evaluate the data and figure out, okay, what do I need to, to adjust? You talk to any, any athlete and they're, they look at the numbers. You talk to any, any executive and they look at the numbers. You know, what, what do the financials say? And why are, when we meet something, what did we do to meet it? And when we don't meet something, what did we do to not meet it? And what do we have to adjust? And that's the key. You have to create data. So you have to do something, but you also have to do something strategically so that you're not just randomly, just hot air, hot, you know, whatever you want to call it, just randomly moving and not having an actual target and not using, like you're saying, uh, a way to measure your progress as you are trying to aim at a specific target. Yeah. And, and you really got to understand what's the right data to look at. Um, you know, as if you're in, if you're running your own company, there is a million data points you can look at as you're, you know, as I was training for, um, any run or any bike ride, I, I have a watch that tracks, you know, all sorts of things. It tracks heart rate, it tracks your speed, it tr your, your pace, you know, how many miles you've gone. I mean, it just, there's over a hundred data elements that are on that watch. And I don't need to look at a hundred data elements. What I would choose is what are the three or four data elements that are most important to me? And I'm going to watch those and I'm going to see how they track. And then it may get to a certain point where, okay, I've got this one data element under control. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to look at something else. But we often figure out, okay, what's easy to measure? I'm going to measure that. And, and that's, and I, I've worked with executives on this before and they'll say, Oh, you know, what can we measure? It's like, no, 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 that's not the right question. It's what should you measure and then figure out how you can measure it. But don't look at what you can measure first because you may be measuring the wrong thing. 
Once again, this is how I'm Focus Radio talking to Brian Gillette, executive coach, author, speaker, and ultra distance endurance athlete. And today's topic, we're talking about leading and persevering through challenging times. All this makes sense because if you look at what's going on in the world today, I mean, everywhere you look, there's going to be a challenge somewhere. And it's almost like, if you think about it, we all have different challenges. It's just kind of being maximized now because you have social media, you have all this news, and it's just magnified. But challenges has always been around. And when you look at that, how have you helped your clients navigate through their personal challenges that, that they had to face? Yeah, you know, I, I I think challenges are really good. I think what it does when you when you set those challenges, you set those big goals, it puts you into an unknown territory. And when you go into that unknown territory, it's where you really start to learn. And you know, it's it's kind of getting comfortable, getting you get being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And how do you do that? And and when you're faced with those challenges, how do you keep persevering? And there there's a couple things you know. I have a, I have a bunch of things that kind of help me through and I'll hit on a, on a few of them here is first of all, have confidence in your plan. You know, if, if you spent some time putting together a plan, have confidence in that and, and, you know, drive to that. I, I remember reading a blog about a woman who she wanted to ride her bike 500 miles. And she, she made it 300 miles, which I think is impressive, but she wanted 500 miles. And, and as I was reading the article, she, she said, I think one of the reasons I didn't make it 500 miles is I thought I could only go 300 miles. And why that just drives me crazy is you quit before you even started. You thought you, you didn't think you could be successful before you started. You didn't have the confidence. You know, I saw, I saw a quote the other day. It's like, wouldn't it be great if we all had the confidence of a 25 year old life coach? You know, I've not met a 25 year old life coach that has enough, enough information that just, they don't have enough knowledge at that age. Um, and, but they've got, if they've got that confidence, that's great. So how do you get that confidence? And that confidence comes from being, from the iterate, from being successful at the smaller things and working your, your way up. Um, the other, I mean, the two other things is one is how do you control what you can control? You know, there are things that are, that, you know, challenges are going to be put in front of you and you may not be able to control them and figure out what you can control and figure out what you can't control. And the stuff you can control, try to do it. If it's stuff you can't control, try to get rid of it. You know, I, I remember at somewhere around mile 150, it was in the middle of the night and, you know, the Tahoe run and it started to rain. And I can't control whether the rain comes or goes. Um, but what I can control is how I react to that rain. And so I can pull out the light windbreaker that I had, put it on to try to stay a little bit dry. I can control my attitude of what I think about it, but I can't control whether that rain comes or goes. And so I can control what, you know, my view of it. And so fi- really figure out how do you control what you can, can control and how do you kind of let go of those things you, you can't control. And then the other thing that really helps when I find I'm kind of in a challenging situation is how do you put things in perspective? You know, I tend to look at the glasses as mostly full, kind of in life. And, and you know, there, there's always somebody that's in a worse situation. You know, granted, there's always somebody in a better situation as well. But I, I remember during one of my training runs, there was one week where I had to do four 30 mile runs in a day. So Sunday, 30 miles, Monday, 30 miles, Tuesday, run 30 miles and Wednesday, run 30 miles. And on my third day, you know, it it was approaching a hundred degrees. It was August. It was hot. I, you know, already, you know, in the last two and a half days, I'd run 70 miles and my legs were tired. I was, it was hot. I was miserable. And I thought, oh, I just want to quit. And then I thought about a friend of mine who was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I thought, you know, she doesn't have the opportunity to quit. You know, what I'm going through is voluntary. I can quit. I can go sit on the couch and my pain's going to be gone away in, in no time. She doesn't have that. And so it helped me realize that, hey, my problem, while it sucks because it's hot and I'm miserable, it's not that bad and I can get through it. And so I just kind of stopped whining in my head and moved forward. And, and what's, 
What's interesting is I was talking to her about this story later on, and she said, you know, I was going through the same thing. I was thinking, you know, she was dealing with breast cancer. I was thinking about another friend who was going through something much worse than I. So how do you kind of put things in perspective and really, really kind of understand? It's like, okay, others have gone, gotten through these challenging times. I probably can too. And how do I shift again, shift your perspective a little bit? Man, that's good stuff. Once again, talking to Brian Gillette. And I kind of want to do a quick review. So epic, envision, P, plan, I, iterate, C, collaborate, and then perform. I really like this concept because if you're listening to this, it's not just your career, it's not just your business, it's your personal life. It's like, what what am I going to do and decide to do? Because we can get into that funk where we're just just very uh, content and we plateau and we, we really don't go for any challenges. We, we try to look and avoid challenges. And how dangerous is that to someone's uh, dream, if you will, for their personal life and professional life? Yeah, you look towards those challenges. I, I remember as a kid, I was, uh, my parents used to take us away every year to go skiing for a week somewhere in another state. And, and, you know, we'd take my brother, he'd take, they'd take my brother and I, and we'd go to Utah or Idaho or Colorado. And I remember, you know, I was probably 10 years old. We were in Breckenridge, Colorado on day one of this ski vacation. And I came skiing down the hill toward the end of the day. And, you know, in my head, I looked really good and I come sliding down next to my dad and I spray snow all over him. And I said, oh man, I haven't fallen all day. And I was really proud of it. And he, he looked at me, he complimented me on my form. And he said, you know, you're doing, you're doing really well. One thing to keep in mind is when you're not falling, you're not learning. And so when you're not pushing yourself, you're not learning. And so how do you continue to challenge yourself and push yourself? So I think that's an important thing. And, and sometimes you're going to challenge yourself and you're going to find that line that you've gone over and, and you're going to fall. And it hurts, you know, whether physically or psychologically. And you got to balance out, you know, how far you push, how, how, where you push that line. But, you know, I think it's, it's good to challenge yourself and, and see, you know, chances are you can go further than you, you want. And that's kind of what started me on this path when I was on this 300 mile bike ride, this one day ride. I thought that was going to push me to a limit that I wouldn't be able to, you know, it was going to push me beyond my limit. And about 275 miles after a hard day, I realized I didn't hit the limit. And, you know, maybe I can go a little bit further and maybe I can challenge myself a little bit further. So it's, you know, I encourage people to kind of, Set their goals, and if it doesn't make them nervous, it's that nervous quotient I often you know talk about. If it's if it doesn't make them nervous, then push it a little bit further until it does make them nervous. Once again, listen, I'm your focus radio talk to Brian Gillette, and man, I really enjoyed today's conversation, and I hope listeners who listen will get his book because you mentioned it earlier. This. This book is coming out really soon. By the time this uh, podcast comes out, it'll be already out. But Epic Performance Lessons from 100 Executives and Endurance Athletes on Reaching Your Peak. I think it's a very timely book for people who may, might feel a little bit discouraged. Maybe it's because it's time for you to challenge yourself and really push yourself through. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you, Brian. And before we let you go, how can people reach out to you if they want to contact you? Yeah, well, thank you, Shamaya, for having me on. I mean, you're doing some great things. I, uh, I've listened to some of your podcasts as well, and so really enjoy what you're doing. Uh, for people to contact me, they can go to epicperformances.com. So that's E P I C performances with an S dot com. And, you know, they can, they can learn more about the book. They can connect up with me, send me an email. I always love getting emails about big ideas people are working on. And then I also have an assessment, um, at epicperformances.com where you can assess how well do you perform at each of the five different behaviors, envision, plan, iterate, collaborate, and perform. Um, and then you'll get a custom and report. What they can do is if they use refocused as the um, business code, as the code, um, they can get a free report. 
Man, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Once again, having true honor talking to Brian Gillette, executive coach, author, speaker, and ultra distance endurance athlete. Make sure you get his book. It's coming out when this podcast is out. And that is Epic Performance Lessons from 100 Executives and Endurance Athletes on Reaching Your Peak. I want to say thank you again, taking time in your super busy schedule, Brian, for talking to us today. Thank you. I wish you, uh, you and all your listeners a great day. Thanks, Shamaya.